Hello there. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this tiny little uh, falling leaves effect. By the way, this is my game that I've recently published in Google Play Store. Uh, the links in the description if you want to play the game for free. And you can, of course, if you want to go ahead and um, buy the game in Play Store. But if you want to play the game for free, uh, please uh, tell me in the comment section and I'll send you a uh, a code a promo code so you can just go ahead and use that code in order to download the game on your Android device okay let's get started this is a Niagara system um, which we'll go ahead into the edit section let me find the material first okay this is the base mesh that you have to use um, there will be a mesh and in total there will be a mesh and two textures that are available in the description for you to download so make sure you go ahead and download those two um, there are two ways to create this effect one of them is just going to create a um, sprite um, using a transparent or a uh, a mask material the other one is to use a mesh and um, use a transparent or uh, mask material I've used the mesh and the mesh and the textures are available to download oh you can see my cat here <laughs> okay <laughs> look at <laughs> um, so these are the textures that you will be downloading there are two textures one of them is just for diffuse the other one if you want to use them of course I don't know if that's gonna be a, a, a good thing for you if you want to really support all the devices out there I wouldn't really recommend using another texture which uh, isn't that bad but it's 341 kilobytes which you can um, save by not using this section by the way okay so the first step is just to go uh, create a new material just go ahead and create material name it something I've already named it M underline leaves um, so uh, open it up the first um, thing that you have to consider in your material is uh, whether you want it to be masked or transparent so if you pay cl close attention when um, the leaves are touching something they just go out of the existence do you want that if you want that I mean if you don't want to fade it out and then kill the particles then the blend mode should be uh, masked the shading mode how model however if you want the leaves to cast shadows I mean I'm uh, I'm working on a mobile game I don't want everything to cast shadows so I just went ahead and uh, selected the shading model as on late but if you want it to cast shadows then it should be default late the default value and of course it must be two-sided because uh, the player can see them from every angle they are rotating in the air and they are just like this all the time so they have to the player should um, see the leaves from all the angles so two-sided it is the blend mode uh, if you want to mask them with uh, if you want to fade them and also use the masked blend mode there's another option that you can use just come in here uh, and type did their opacity mask you can fade this uh, fade the effect out with this option if you want a really nice cheap performance way to do it this is the way to go masked and then come here and check this one out but if you want the best looking um, effect uh, fade out and fade in effect then this one must be translucent there's no other way okay I'm gonna go ahead and select mask I'm going to uh, drag both of my textures into the scene like this and then there's nothing else I should do it just uh, I just multiplied it since this one is on late for me I have to use the emissive color node I can't even use the normal normal 
uh, texture so I'm not using it if you want to use it this one should be uh, uh, lit but I'm working on a mobile game so I don't really need it uh, the alpha channel goes to the opacity mask or if you are using the translucent um, shading model it should go into the opacity node uh, and hold M if you are using the only shading model and then just to tone it a little bit down because if it's set to one it's a little bit bright I don't want that so 0.3 is the way to go for me and hit save and um, the next step would be to create the Niagara system so right click in your Niagara folder for me it's Amory um, FX Niagara system uh, and then I'll just go ahead and it's like something like a default for me I always start with the fountain here so just add it and then hit finish um, and name it something afterwards I've named it falling leaves underline NS which this is what I have here okay there are some things that you need to I mean, just come along it's not that bad these are the default values loop behavior is gonna be infinite it's gonna be infinitely spawning um, actors into the scene um, and five seconds that is the default value so don't really need to do anything about that you can change the sim target to GPU compute sim though it's not that bad I wouldn't really go ahead and select the GPU sim but if, if you want to um, optimize the hell out of your game this is what you should do as well because you know it's already I mean if you're working on mobile games or probably most of the consoles out there you're gonna be probably CPU bound and this is one of the um, one of the options that you have to make sure that you are not going to be CPU bound or you are CPU bound and you're getting a little bit better FPS GPU compute sim and then you have to make sure that the bounds are just come in here select this one and select this one and you're good to go I'm going ahead with the CPU bound and the bounce mode should be dynamic for me I don't want it to be um, preset okay um, the loop behavior is again infinite and the loop duration is two seconds it means that every two seconds it's spawning something but since I'm using the spawn rate right now doesn't really matter it's always spawning but if you are bursting particles into the scene this loop duration is the um, duration that you are that you have to change if you want to give them a rest so it's like they burst something into the scene and then they rest for like if this is five seconds they rest for five seconds and then they burst again it's just two for me at the moment uh, the spawn rates is something that's default when you're using the fountain if not just go ahead and type in spawn rate uh, it's five for me it's probably a little bit too much so I'm gonna go ahead with three uh, to see if it looks any better I mean it definitely looks a little bit better okay. oh um, and the mesh itself this is not the mesh the mesh is just a plane a carved plane so when you create this material make sure that you hit this one and then go into the mesh and hit this one you select an asset from content browser and hit save uh, and this right renderer that we have here disable it come here select the mesh renderer and in the meshes uh, you just go ahead and select it in the um, find it in the content browser and select it from content browser here and since we've already uh, applied the material into the mesh we don't really need to anything else so we can just go ahead and I mean you, you already have it right okay so well we've covered spawn rate uh, so shape location is the default is one of the default nodes that um, if you're using the fountain preset 
if not just go ahead and type in shape locations nothing uh, something really complex do so I've changed the sp sphere radius to 50 it's uh, the shape primitive is sphere it's I mean it's maybe something else by default but uh, I've, s I've selected sphere it may be the default value as well and then, uh, I mean I can't really remember much but 50 is a good value you can go ahead and uh, play around with it um, doesn't matter if you want to do so you're more, more than welcome to do that the velocity so when we are having uh, leaves going around the scene there's usually a wind system being applied to them right so this velocity is that wind system the wind sometimes it's random yeah but most of the times it's just in um to one direction which uh that you which you can choose right so i just choose the x value the plus side of the x value which is going to be 600 and then a little bit of y value which in this case i've random them at uh zero to 600 how you can make them random so you can just come here it's, I mean the default value is this so you can just come here type in random range vector and 600 600 and probably a little bit of, I can't remember which one was it a hundred value of Z value because there's gonna be gravity force so they had they need to have a little bit of upwards velocity so then the gravity will force them down um, this I found that works nicely so you can play around with it as well um, the mesh rotation force is important without it the leaves wouldn't rotate they just go ahead like flat we don't want that so come here mesh rotation force it's in the particle spawn so when they spawn it's like they spawn with some rotation applied to them and th that rota rotation is based on even tick they always rotate uh, and then again I've made them random so just type in random range vector 0 to 5 0 to 5 0 to 5 everything's random uh, and then this one will be applied by default when you use this one I've changed the gravity again uh, it's the default value is minus 980 I mean I don't want that it's the true uh, value of gravity in the real world but the leaves are so light that they won't they wouldn't just fall down they would just fly a little bit and then eventually gradually fall down so again here random range vector 0 to 1, 0 to 1, I didn't change this stuff but the z value is something that we're interested in changing so the minimum value will be minus 30 the maximum value minus 200 and I didn't change the drag value, the scale color, this is important in the material section if you're using the blend mode as masked with the dirt either opacity mask or if you're using the translucent directly you can use this curve okay if you're using the masked material without anything applied to it then you can't I didn't but if you want to again you can just go ahead and change this to translucent and change this curve change this curve maybe you can just make this one zero and then apply another one so it's like they fade in they are visible into the scene and when they want to die just before they die they fade out something smooth but I didn't use that because of the performance reasons because if in the material section if you change the blend mode to translucent they will be translucent and everything behind them will be visible okay it means that the render the engine will have to uh, 
it has it has to render a lot of pixels into a scene, right? So for for each pixel, if there are too many meshes, just one by one, one by one behind each other, the renderer has to render that pixel for so many times. So if a leaf is here, translucent then it has to render the leaf it has to render the i mean i have fog in my scene it has to render the fog it has to render the i don't know tree and if that tree is translucent it has to just go ahead a, little, a level even further than that and probably render the mountains it has to render a lot of a pixel like at least three times i don't want that so it's it's because I've set the blend mode to masked. Okay, um, so for my particles, when they hit something, they just get killed instantly, uh, and that's why I'm using the collision. So you can just go ahead and type in collision. By default, um, they just hit everything. It's compiling. They hit, they'll hit everything, so let's see. They'll hit everything and they just rotate. <laughs> I don't want that, um, so I just added a kill particle, kill particles, and this is the default value. It, you, you have nothing in it, uh, but if you come here and type in has collided, you can drag this one into the here. So it means that this value gets written by the collision uh, node that we have here. So if they collide, this will be true. And if it's true, it will kill the particles. It's as simple as that. And the curl, uh, curl noise force, you can just type in curl noise force, uh, a strength of 500, a frequency of 5000. That's a lot, I know, but and less than that, it wouldn't just get visible into the scene, so I didn't like that. Instead of using the collision, because in the initialized particle, I mean, I totally forgot this part. In the initialized particle, the lifetime min uh, is 10 seconds. It's a lot, I know that. But since it's just a masked mesh, the mesh is not really complicated. Makes sense to use such a huge long lifetime 10 and 20 are the minimum and maximum values i did change the color because just a mesh it has a texture in it so i don't really need to and i didn't really use the particle color node particle color node in here to change the color so if i even change the color in the in the niagara system it wouldn't change anything And uh, I'm not changing the size here. I'm changing the size of the mesh in the mesh attributes because we are using the mesh renderer, not the sprite renderer. So 0.2 and 0.5, I've felt that is the good value. You can go ahead and play around with it. I definitely recommend you go ahead and play, play around with everything. You may achieve a much better result, results better than me. Um, you will definitely if you play around with it enough um, So we can not use the collision and the kill particles I mean, yes But you can change the lifetime min and max so for example because you have to Kill the particles somehow otherwise they'll just go forever and it will hit the performance since everything is CPU based you can probably go ahead and make this 5 to 10. I mean, it's completely up to you because collision, again, is another load on CPU. So it's completely on, on to you. To, if you you want to use collision, you are welcome. You don't want to use it, you are welcome. Um, and that's it. And just go ahead and drag it into the scene. I've already did it and if you change the direction it will spawn the leaves on different directions yeah that's it
it's safe and i wish you a great week have a great day bye